Although I do need a couple of volunteers who are going to find out what's in the mystery box. I'm wondering whether these four people might come and look in the mystery box with me. Would you guys come and do that? You don't want to come up? Okay. Well, I've got two volunteers. Okay, Addison and William, you come and uh, let's lift up the latch on that mystery box and see what is inside. There we go. What is it? Okay, can you take those out for me and hold them up for everybody to see? It's a pair of running shoes. Okay, thank you. Well, I want to start this morning. You guys can go back and sit with your family. I want to start this morning by telling you a story about running. Now, some of you know that I like to run long distances. But it, uh, it wasn't always the case that I liked to run long distances. So when I was first starting out running long distances, I signed up for a 15-kilometer race. And I'm not a really fast runner. I'm kind of a moderate runner. So that, this race should have taken me about an hour and a half of running. But you know what? I was kind of new to all of this, and I thought, I'd like to finish it in less than an hour and a half. I want to run faster than that. And so I hatched this plan about how I was going to be faster than an hour and a half. I decided that I was not going to stop along the way to have anything to drink or eat. I was just going to plow through for an hour and a half. And you know what? I was really pretty fast up until maybe about an hour and 10 minutes. And then I, all of a sudden, got really lightheaded, and my muscles felt like cement, and I barely finished the race. And not only that, but for about two weeks after that race, I could hardly get out of bed. I was so exhausted from that race. There's a really technical term for what happened to me on that race. Do you want to hear what it was? I bonked. That's what you call it. That's what you call it when you don't feed your muscles and you just keep racing. You're going to hit that wall. You are going to bonk. Now, what does running have to do with our worship here this morning? Well, we heard Anna read us a story about two people. One of them was Philip, the apostle, and one of them is a guy whose name we don't know, but we know that he was a servant of the queen of Ethiopia, and we know he was a really important servant because he had his own chariot, and he had some other people who were waiting on him. So he's a really important person, but we don't know his name. And God brings these two people together, Philip and this servant from Ethiopia. And this servant from Ethiopia is reading a piece of scripture. He's trying to figure out what this is all about. And Philip comes along the way and says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, no, I really don't. I need help. I need a teacher. That's really smart because all of us, no matter how old we are, we always need people to help us learn and to teach us. And so Philip climbs into the chariot and he tells this servant all about Jesus. And this servant guy is so amazed by what he hears about Jesus that he says that he wants to be baptized right then and there he wants to be baptized and so they pull over they find i don't know a river or a stream or a pool of water and philip baptizes this servant right then and there and then god sweeps philip up and sends him off to do something else we never hear about this servant from ethiopia ever again which makes it sound as if the baptism is the end of his story but actually, 
actually baptism is the beginning of a story. Now, I need somebody who's going to take these running shoes and put them over there by our baptism font to remind us of how baptism is kind of like putting on a pair of running shoes and saying, I'm going to run with God. It's the beginning of a journey with God. And just like when I was running that 15-kilometer race, it takes energy. You need nourishment for running that race with God. Otherwise, what's going to happen to you? You're going to bonk. Okay? So, what are some of the things that give us energy for serving God, for following Jesus, for being part of Jesus' life? What are some of the things that nourish us and give us energy for the life of faith? Food. Food, yep. So we actually need to, we need to have strong bodies, we need to nourish our bodies in order to do all of the things that God wants us to do. That's really good. Yeah, we actually do need to eat in order to serve God. What else? There are other things that help us to live the life of faith. Um, Never mind. <laughs> all right, any other ideas? Addison, what do you think? Water, okay, that's good. So yeah, we actually need to keep our bodies strong. We need to eat, we need to drink water. Well, yeah. Exercise, say that again. Exercise. Exercise, okay, yep. Carrie over there. Pray, that's a really good answer, isn't it? Yeah, so we need to do all of those things to keep our bodies strong, but we also need to do things to keep our spirits strong in order to run with God, in order to live that life of faith. Guess what? There is a false bottom in that mystery box. Can I get somebody to go and look in the false bottom? Lily, you want to do it? Okay. See whether you can find out what is in the false bottom of the mystery box. Yeah. So there's kind of a little flap there. Can you reach in? That's it. Thank you, Lily. Okay, so in the mystery box this morning in the false bottom is an energy bar. That's what I really should have eaten on that 15-kilometer run. I would have done a lot better, and I would not have bonked. Well, Jesus actually kind of gives us an energy bar for the life of faith. Now, in today's gospel that Michael read for us, Jesus talked about being the vine, and we're the branches, and that we need to stay connected to Jesus in order to have life, in order to have that life of faith. Well, here's the interesting thing about these words. Jesus says this to his disciples around a meal. He's saying this to them as he's eating with them. Does anybody know what we call that meal? Owen. The Last Supper? We call it the Last Supper, that's right, because it's the Last Supper that Jesus shares with his disciples before he dies on Good Friday. And so while he's sharing this meal with them, he breaks bread, and he passes the bread around to all of his friends, and then he takes a drink out of the cup of wine, he passes that cup of wine around, and he says to them, you need to keep doing this. You need to keep gathering together, and you need to share this bread and share this wine in my name. Now, he doesn't say that this will prevent you from bonking, but actually, this is the energy bar that Jesus gives us so that we can stay energized, 
so that we can stay connected, so that we have the muscles that we need for the life of faith. How does this happen? Well, I'm going to say that there are four main sources of energy that we get when we share communion or when we share the Eucharist. Those are two words that we use for that gathering together at God's table to share the bread and the wine, communion or Eucharist. There are four ways that it gives us this energy bar of faith. First of all, it gathers us together. You can't have communion by yourself. You have to have at least one other person, and isn't it wonderful when we have a whole church full of people who are all different from us, and we all get to gather together, and we need one another in order to know and love God. We just can't know and love God without being willing to get to know and care about one another. So that's the first source of energy that we get from communion. The second source of energy is that we tell Jesus' story. Jesus shows us how to live a life full of God's love. And so if we keep telling that story, if we stay close to that story, then we get connected into God's love as well, and God's love becomes part of our lives. That's the second source of energy. The third source of energy is that there's a promise. There's a promise that we're given every time we share communion in Jesus' name. And the promise is that Jesus is with us, that we don't have to face any challenge or any hardship or even any of the great things that happen in our lives. We always have Jesus with us to share with us in this life and to walk with us and to guide us and to extend that friendship of God to us. We need that friendship of God in order to have the energy that we need. And the fourth thing that we receive energy from when we gather at God's table is we get energy from finding out who we are. In our baptism, we make a choice to be part of the life of Jesus, to be part of the body of Christ. And when we come up and we receive communion, one of us will say to you, the body of Christ, when we give you the bread. Well, we're talking about the bread, Jesus' presence with us, but we're also talking about you. You are the body of Christ. You are Jesus' life here on earth. And so every time we come up and receive that bread and that wine together, we're renewed in who we are. So all of those are energy sources for us so that we don't bonk in the life of faith. We don't lose our muscles. We stay strong and we're able to serve and love God every step of the way. Can I get somebody to take this energy bar up and place it on the altar so that we remember that this is a gift to us so that we stay strong and we have energy for all of the ways that God wants us to serve and love. Thank you, Theo. We are going to continue now with our affirmation of faith and with our prayers.